CCP's new policy attracts foreigners, leading to an influx from poorer countries. Prominent Chinese economist Ma Yuxia relocates to Canada. Economists stunned by unexpected decision from Li Chang. Back to the Qing Dynasty. New twists in CCP's state banquet service. Analysis, legitimacy questioned by the public, the CCP regime is in jeopardy. It's all covered in today's China Truths. CCP's new policy attracts foreigners, leading to an influx from poorer countries. On January 11, the CCP's Immigration Administration unveiled five new policies for foreign nationals' entry, as part of an effort to draw foreign nationals to China. They include easing conditions for visa applications at ports, 24-hour direct transit visa exemptions at major airports like Beijing Capital Airport, local processing for visa extensions, and simplifying visa document application materials. Analysts speculate that these measures have underlying motives. Li Yuanhua, an Australian-based scholar, observed that the number of people entering China is currently low, particularly due to three years of lockdowns and unstable policies affecting business and tourism. He pointed out China's need for foreign currency, as incoming foreigners typically spend money. With the withdrawal of foreign investment and industrial chains moving out, the question arises, how will China attract foreign currency without foreign visitors? On January 7, the CCP's State Administration of Foreign Exchange disclosed that China's foreign exchange reserves amounted to 3.238 trillion US dollars at the end of last year. In contrast, in June 2014, the reserves had peaked at 3.9932 trillion US dollars, indicating almost no growth over nearly a decade. CCP officials assert these new measures are designed to remove bottlenecks for foreigners coming to China for business, study, or tourism as part of maintaining openness to the world. Li, however, observes that education, mainly attracting African students due to abundant scholarships, is less impacted by China's openness. In contrast, he points out that the business sector sees minor effects. He underscores that tourism is primarily affected, large airports experience reduced flights without tourists. Li believes the central aim is to boost spending in China, particularly in the heavily impacted tourism sector due to decreased travel. However, following three years of strict zero-COVID policies and their eventual easing, China's economy has continued to shrink. The CCP's amendments to the anti-espionage law, which have led to the suppression of foreign businesses and arbitrary detentions, have hastened the withdrawal of foreign investment, with very few foreigners now traveling to China for business or tourism. Former Beijing lawyer and chair of the Federation for a Democratic China-Canada, Lai Jianping, commented, the CCP is currently facing a comprehensive crisis. The statistics from the latter half of last year compared to those of 2022 show China grappling with the triple light problem, a significant reduction in the flow of people, logistics, and capital. What was once at 100% has now plummeted to merely 5% or 10%, resulting in a swift downturn in China's economy. In December of last year, the CCP implemented a one-sided visa exemption policy for ordinary passport holders from six countries. According to Lai Jianping, the CCP's objective is to attract a global influx into China to drive economic growth. However, according to him, the effectiveness of this policy is quite limited, as it impacts different groups in different ways. For people from particularly underdeveloped and impoverished countries with unstable economies and political turmoil, they can use landing visas or other means to enter China and stay illegally. So, for this group, the policy is highly advantageous. Lai believes that for people from Western countries, even with the offer of special charter flights by the CCP, interest would be minimal, as they have recognized the true nature of the CCP and are cognizant of the current state of affairs in China. Prominent Chinese economist Ma Yuxia relocates to Canada. Prominent Chinese economist Ma Yuxia has escaped to Canada. He recently celebrated his 95th birthday in Vancouver. The information was reported by reporter Yi Bing from Voice of America on January 16. According to the report, the Maos have been keeping a low profile in recent years and settled in their children's Vancouver home last year, intending to stay there for good. 
On January 14, independent commentator and columnist Kai Shinkuen posted on social media platform X, stating, Mr. Mayushir, a lifelong champion of freedom, has at last reached a free land on his 95th birthday. He openly stated he does not intend to return to China, his home for over 90 years. He expressed his regret at not being able to see a modern China characterized by freedom, democracy, and rule of law, nor witness the Chinese people selecting their political leaders and parties through voting. However, Mr. Mao is not despairing about the future. He maintains that the course of history is unalterable. Attempts to reverse progress won't gain public support and are doomed to fail. He firmly believes that China will soon join the worldwide community of free nations, enjoying not only a free market economy but also essential freedoms like forming political parties, free speech, freedom of movement, and freedom from fear. Kai's post included a photo of Mr. and Mrs. Mao happily cutting a birthday cake, enjoying red wine. As early as January 14, 2019, on his 90th birthday, Mao Yushir stated in an interview with the British Financial Times, you ask if, given the choice, I would prefer to be born in another time, another country. Certainly, if I had the choice, I would opt for the United States. Mao Yushir, a prominent figure in Chinese liberal academia and economics, established the Unirule Institute of Economics in Beijing in 1993. Mao Yushir's scholarly contributions include notable papers like The Principle of Optimal Allocation and The Moral Prospects of the Chinese People. His work earned him significant recognition. In 2012, the Cato Institute, an American think tank, awarded him the Milton Friedman Prize for Advancing Liberty. Further, in 2014, the British magazine Prospect named him World Thinker of the Year, a distinction he alone held among Chinese nationals. Economists stunned by unexpected decision from Li Chang. In January 2024, at the annual World Economic Forum meeting in Davos, Chinese Premier Li Chang addressed a global audience. He highlighted that China's economy grew approximately 5.2% the previous year, surpassing the initial target of about 5%. The UK's Financial Times reported that Li Chang's announcement prior to the official release of economic data by the CCP's Bureau of Statistics surprised economists. This move was perceived as an attempt to alleviate global concerns about the resilience of China's economy in the aftermath of the pandemic. Despite this positive growth figure, China is grappling with challenges such as weak private sector investment, high youth unemployment, and a general sense of caution signaled by falling prices and low consumer and business confidence. Foreign capital withdraws in succession, Li Chang issues urgent message. Li Chang noted that foreign direct investment in China yields about a 9% return and stressed the country's continued welcome of international businesses. Additionally, Li Chang advocated for enhanced global coordination on macroeconomic policies, a gesture towards efforts by the United States and its allies to reduce supply chain dependencies on China. Responding to these developments, Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission, expressed a desire to maintain economic ties with China but also emphasized the need to mitigate supply chain risks. She criticized China's potential export controls on key metals used in semiconductor production, implying that such measures could undermine trust. Voice of America highlighted the CCP leadership's deep concerns regarding the widespread retreat of foreign companies and capital. This trend threatens to accelerate the shift of production and supply chains, potentially diminishing China's role in the global economy. Li Chang's appeal at the Davos Forum was a strategic move to reverse this trend and support China's recovery from a significant economic downturn. Elizabeth Bra, a columnist for Foreign Policy magazine, conveyed to American media that the Chinese market, under CCP governance, poses increasing challenges for Western businesses. The unpredictability of the Chinese government and the risk of becoming targets of governmental retaliation are major concerns. Regarding the return of foreign investment, a survey from the conference board in November last year indicated a decline in confidence among CEOs of multinational corporations operating in China, with 40% expecting reduced capital investment. Bloomberg, analyzing CCP Ministry of Commerce data, reported a 19.5% year-on-year decrease in China's new foreign capital usage in November, suggesting a significant retreat of foreign investment.
An article by the Peterson Institute for International Economics highlighted that while multinational companies may not have completely withdrawn from China, their significant pullback has caught the attention of the CCP government. Despite governmental efforts to encourage foreign investment through supportive statements and policies, skepticism persists among foreign businesses about the effectiveness of these measures. Additionally, escalating geopolitical tensions contribute to the uncertain environment for foreign direct investment in China. Bloomberg reported a Goldman Sachs survey indicating that these tensions have surpassed inflation as the top risk for 2024, casting further doubt on whether foreign investors will return to China in the near future. Back to the Qing Dynasty New Twists in CCP's State Banquet Service in adherence to earlier mandates for uniformity and precision, waitresses at Chinese Communist Party state banquets have adopted novel practices. Recent online videos reveal a spacious hall with elongated tables and chairs, where approximately 200 women, attired in Qing Dynasty Changsams and wearing traditional flowerpot shoes, balance books or notebooks on their heads. A middle-aged woman, commanding from a central T-shaped stage, barks sequences like 1234, prompting the women to rhythmically sway their waists, apparently mimicking the gait and etiquette of Qing dynasty aristocracy as depicted in movies. Upon the woman's sharp command to stop, the waitresses abruptly freeze, as though immobilized by a pressure point, locking into a pose with one arm extended forward and the other backward, maintaining the exact stance from a moment prior. The video's caption indicates, this is a training session for maids at the Communist Empire's state banquets, catering to the Communist Party and international dignitaries. The uploader of the video remarks, it's as if we've regressed to the Qing dynasty era. The CCP has reached a level of extravagance in its pursuit of enjoyment. Another previously released clip demonstrates, after arranging notebooks and water bottles on a table, two individuals use a string to ensure the alignment of the teacups, notebooks, and mineral waters across the long table's rows. An additional video captures waitresses in synchronized motion amidst the tables, rehearsing the precise pouring of water from kettles into cups. The meticulousness of their posture, down to the exact angle of their body tilt while pouring, rivals that of the CCP's ceremonial honor guard. Internet users have left various comments, including remarks like, in a setting reminiscent of North Korea, modern communist concubines is a concept where ordinary tasks are executed poorly, while the ridiculous is handled with utmost professionalism, good deeds are riddled with errors, yet malicious acts are executed flawlessly. Some say, even if the Chinese can bear great hardship and labor, they cannot support such a regime, and it's only now that we realize that what we call New China, the People's Republic, is just the emperor's dream in disguise. Analysis, legitimacy questioned by the public, the CCP regime is in jeopardy. Three years of China's stringent zero-COVID policy have ignited widespread skepticism about the legitimacy of the Chinese Communist Party regime, leading to vocal demands to overthrow the Communist Party. A slew of videos on social media show mainland Chinese citizens boldly confronting police officers, challenging both the CCP's authority and the conduct of its law enforcement agencies. In one video on social media platform X, three policemen are left speechless and visibly uncomfortable under the stern rebuke of a civilian. The civilian demands accountability, asserting, why can't I supervise you? The Chinese Communist Party, established by the Soviet Communist Party, is essentially a traitor group. They led the overthrow of the legitimate Republic of China government. I represent the people, why can't I hold you accountable? Criticizing the Communist Party is my right. By pointing out your flaws and errors, you want to arrest me? Any regime that shuns oversight is effectively a cult, a tyranny that instills fear in its people, this is a universal truth. The civilian's forthright words earn broad admiration. In addition, in Beijing, police have been recently openly scrutinizing pedestrians and public transport users' personal information and phones. One woman at the Jiang Women subway station confronted three plainclothes officers, who claimed to be from the local police station and demanded to verify her identity. She challenged them loudly, why do you need to check my ID? Are you even in uniform? Is ID verification required for subway travel? Have I broken any law? The officers were visibly flustered by her interrogation. The CCP's control reaches every level of society, down to the smallest villages and neighborhoods. 
The rising resistance among grassroots citizens signifies a failure in the CCP's stringent stability maintenance. This resistance was particularly pronounced during the extreme COVID-19 lockdowns, which essentially turned mainland China into a vast prison. Everyone was subjected to constant surveillance, confined to their homes and communities, regardless of illness or lack of food. The exasperated populace began to question, what gives the authorities the right to strip us of our fundamental right to survive? This period saw numerous online instances of confrontations between citizens and law enforcement, including police, auxiliary police, grid workers, and the so-called big whites. The public's anger culminated in the substantial white paper revolution, with calls for down with the Communist Party and Xi Jinping stepped down. Subsequently, many considered emigration or underground alternatives. The CCP's 20th Congress explicitly prioritized regime security over the welfare of the Chinese people. The party's constitution now embraces a struggle philosophy of daring and skilled in combat, guiding cadre promotion and evaluation. This shift signifies a growing trend towards merging party and state functions, replacing regular state duties with an omnipresent fear of regime collapse. Former Beijing lawyer and chair of the Federation for a Democratic China-Canada, Lai Jianping, told the Epoch Times, authoritarian regimes inherently lack a legal foundation, that's their core nature. The party has evolved from a one-party dictatorship to a dictatorship of one, lacking any legal or regulatory foundation. Unlike a one-party system, which at least follows its own set of rules, a single-person dictatorship is beholden only to that individual's will. Originally, the party limited governance to two terms. Xi Jinping's unlawful rule has prompted widespread opposition, forcing him to use severe methods to preserve his dictatorship. It's not just the general public expressing dissent, financial publications representing the middle class, such as Tsai and China Business News, have also voiced their opposition, openly challenging the CCP's top leadership. Lai Jianping, a noted political scientist, observed that resistance naturally arises where there is oppression. An overly authoritarian society inevitably reaches a breaking point, he explained, where, given the right conditions, a formidable resistance movement can emerge across China. Li Yuanhua believes that if Xi Jinping ties himself closely with the Communist Party, he will inevitably lead down the path of authoritarianism and political persecution. The more he does this, the faster it will ultimately contribute to the downfall of the Chinese Communist Party. He declared, it can be confidently stated that Xi's regime and his personal dictatorship are estimated to collapse within one or two years. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.